Welcome to the AI Tools episode of Building Jam. We're going to talk through what are the eight tools we actually use week to week to build Jam. Let's go. Let's see the tweet. Here we are. The first tool on the list here, we have in-product API. Drumroll, please. Gemini and OpenAI. Okay. Yeah, we use, we use two. So this, this created a lot of discussion in the tweets. Like, why are you using two of them? So we have this feature called JamGPT. It's a debugging assistant right in Jam. We're also building some other AI features that there's an early access happening right now, but top secret. Well, so, so why do we use two? It's because they're spiky and good at different things. So the Gemini's ability to analyze video is like far and beyond everyone else. For everyone else, you have to sort of, you have to like break down the video into its components and send frames and transcripts and all. Like it's just really hard to work with video and Gemini just works the video great out of the gate. Um, but it's, the quality is not, you know, as up to snuff on other things as, you know, like Claude or OpenAI. And so uh, we, we end up using multiple. Cool. Okay. Prototyping number two. Yes. Okay. So hey, um, building an AI feature is very different than building other types of features because uh, usually for other types of features, first the designer can go in and like plan all the user flows. And then the engineer can like look at the Figma and be like, got it. I'm going to build that. But with AI, the user flow is generated and we need to prompt it. And, and so like actually the text that is generated is the user experience and it needs to be designed. Like, um, for example, imagine that Jam wrote the bug report for you, but it wrote it in a way that that sounded very corporate. It would change your company culture just by using this product, right? So we actually care about the tone. We care about the link. Like we don't want you to read a lot of stuff. So, um, so that's that's a designed experience. How does the designer play with prompts and try stuff out? So uh, Glyph is like Zapier for AI. You can just sort of like build these workflows and plug and play. And so like Chris, as he's been working on these like new AI features, will just like create a glyph for the feature where he can try different prompts. So it'll be like, he'll like sort of deconstruct a jam and he'll send the various parts of the jam and he'll send different prompts and be able to sort of like figure out what would be a good prompt to suggest to the engineers. Oh, I see. Is it, can you give a, a concrete example about how we, how we look at one part and how we'd make a or change something based on it like i feel like it'd be i'd love to see like specifically or hear more about like a concrete small yeah like thing. here's an example so um there's a lot of details in every jam right there's the device details there are the console logs there are all the network requests there's user actions there is a transcript of the video walkthrough there's the screen itself there's just a lot what it when a human receives a bug report we're very good at like just knowing what to focus on logically based on the bug. But if we just send everything to an AI, sometimes it will overly focus on one thing versus another. Like maybe you have an ad block on, so you have a bunch of network errors and it's overly focused on your network errors, even like the bug is about something else. And so it's really important for the designer to sort of prototype, like I'm gonna send here are the console logs, here are the network requests, here's the device information, here's the screen, and then tweak the prompt so that the AI is always focused on the right things. So that's like one example. That's hard to do if like only the engineers have access to like code and prototyping. That's why Glyph is such a great tool. Cool. Okay, number three, code. Yes. Let's talk about Copilot. There was a day where Petter was like on a loaner laptop and he didn't have access to Copilot. And he was like, at the end of the day, he's like, I didn't get anything done. Like this, the like team has been using this now for like a year and a half. It has totally changed their workflows. Um, Oscar says he can't imagine going back to a time before Copilot. He says he thinks it makes him 20% faster writing code. Um, but my suspicion is as a team, it's probably higher than that. And the reason is that um, one of the things that Copilot is really good at is it will name your variables for you very logically. Like, like that's like a hard creative task for a human. It's actually quite easy. Like it's a lot easier for an LLM to name a variable. It can write more code comments than you might be willing to spend time writing. Um, and, and so it helps us create more readable code and that has like compounding effects as the code base grows and as more engineers join the team. Okay. Prompt engineering. Yes. Okay. So number, number four, we're yes. talking about prompt foo. Prompt foo. <laughs> I, I've, I've actually, I've never heard of this one myself. When we started, um, building AI features, we were first like tracking our different like ideas for prompts. And then like, um, they're sort of eval rates, like as we would test them against like 
test jams, how well they would um, perform. We were all doing all of that tracking in a Google Sheet. And then we learned about this tool called PromptFoo, which just basically helps you track and test all your prompts. And then like, then you can manage, you can like manage your prompts in one place. So you don't have to like keep track of which prompts did we try and how did, how did they perform? Okay. Podcast production, something I'm very interested in myself. <laughs> yes. Let's talk. Um, let's talk Wondercraft. So, so there are two jam podcasts. There's this one, which is like how, like trying to share what we're learning building jam. Um, we have another jam podcast, which is called this week in JavaScript. It comes out every Sunday at 10 AM and it's what happened in JavaScript news in four minutes or less. And this one is, uh, is, is like the voice is not either one of us. It's an AI and it's, it's done with Wondercraft AI. Um, we met this team because they demoed Wondercraft at an AI event we hosted in London. Um, they are such an awesome product team um, and it's cool to now use their product. Wow. That's, and, and I guess I would add here, the AI features or what we're using to produce this podcast is the tool Descript. And I wanna show you just some of the, these features because that, that sounds like a really AI native um, platform and, and this incorporation of AI feels a bit different. But um, so like, yeah, let me see here. So this is what I was working on before. This is the episode that came out last week. And some of the cool um, things that I use almost every week is just like um, over here, this uh, rep repurposing features, like for example, creating clips and cr creating a highlight reel from a longer recorded episode. Um, and so for example, like uh, often I'll find that these are out of the gate, aren't what I need to actually be able to, to share and to, to, they aren't shareable out of the gate, but they give you this first like initial draft that then I can work with. And so as I'm like trying to find moments to create a highlight reel, like creating this highlight reel here, I mean, come on, might as well, might as well show you. But after I create a highlight reel here, I'll find these little moments that then I can stitch together. Like, and it, it just lets you take like more shots on goal, like as you're looking to identify key moments. Um, and so I found that to be really helpful myself. That's so cool. So I use another, um, that's, this might actually just be the next tool in the tweet. Um, I use another sort of similar AI tool um, mm. called Opus Clip um, because we're trying to share with the Jam community things we're learning building Jam, like, like we're doing now. And um, so sometimes like I'll go on a podcast somewhere and we'll do this like hour long conversation. We cover a lot of topics. And so I want to figure out like what did we cover and what might be interesting to share more about. And so I'll take the link from that podcast. I'll like put it into Opus Clip. And it's actually really good at like, it brings out moments where someone goes, oh, wow, or like people laugh or whatever. And so then we get sort of a transcript and I use that to write like other content that we share about how we build Jam. Actually using it as a way of finding highlight moments or looking back on things that you didn't record yourself. That's, a, that's really interesting. Yeah, maybe this one I'll share. So like um, I went on this podcast uh, called Founder Real Talk. It's by one of our investors. And so we have this like hour long YouTube. And so I put into Opus Clip and 20 minutes later, it's got like, here are the best clips for you to like share. And like, okay, here's my feature request for like Opus Clip. Like I can't exactly share this because like this like doesn't look quite polished. Like the people are cut out. The font is like, you know, very TikTok-y, but I can be like, oh, we talked about how we did user feedback. We, we talked about this moment that we had at Saster and I can be like, okay, is there something for us to share for this example? No, but like, that's, that's how I use it. Okay, where were we? Now we're at meetings. Let's talk about Grain HQ. Yes, we record all of our calls with Grain and Grain has two AI features that are really, really helpful. So one of the most important things we do with the grain recordings is we clip up the most important points for team discussion. Like if a user had great user feedback or is using jam for a really interesting use case, we'll create a clip. And in the past we had to like name this clip well, but now grain has like an auto name your clip feature. That's helpful. The other thing is um, oftentimes recordings are really good for like sharing information. So uh, I'll go do an advice call, I'm like, oh my gosh, Erdifo, I wish Erdifo was there. He would have learned so much or vice versa. We can send each other the call. Um, and Grain just does like meeting summary, key takeaways. It's pretty good. Um, and so that's a helpful AI tool we use in the stack. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I'm always seeing Grain clips all the time in our Slack. Like it's just all, it's all Grain clips, which is, which is great. Let's, okay. PRDs. 
by the OG. Chat PRD. Like, yes. Um, okay, I think one of the hardest jobs in every startup is to be the first product manager. We have an amazing first product manager. Her name, her name is Maya. Um, and she solely is responsible <laughs> for writing PRDs and making sure that they are awesome and clear for engineers. Um, and so Chat PRD is just one helpful tool to help you make sure that like you haven't forgotten something, something could be clearer, uh, something could be formatted better. Like it's just great to have assistance when you're the one person product team um, managing a product that has 156,000 users. Mm -hmm. Go Maya. And the last, the last on the list, writing. Okay, yes. three, triple threat here. Okay, this one I feel a little spicy about. Like part of me thinks like, when I read stuff that's written by an LLM, I can tell, I have this like sort of very, um, like I have this sort of purist approach where all the writing should come from a person. However, now that these things have been out for a while, sometimes they're really helpful editors for your writing. And the different LLMs are, are, the different tools are good for different things. So for example, if we're writing a guide for running a bug bash, um, and we're like, there are probably a lot of tools out there besides Jam. Perplexity can help us go find out a lot of those tools, add some details about them, and then like combine it into one article, right? And then we're like, okay, we want this to rank well in SEO. Um, we should find out, like, we want this structured in a certain way. We go to Claude and we're like, Claude, write an outline for this SEO article that has these tools in it, right? So, so we use a mashup of all of these depending on what it is that we're doing. Or like sometimes it's even really basic, like, um, you know, Ivana and I are writing like an email subject line for our latest feature announcement. It's the unhinged hour, which is like the evening before the 7 a.m. launch. We've exhausted all of our ideas. And now we're like, what does the AI think? Um, and, and maybe something's like, it just sparks ideas. So we use all of them basically. Yeah, this, I mean, I, I think about the parallels just in my video workflow too, with just like the, the generating options. Like it feels like a very productive um, way to brainstorm or like just generate all the, or explore the, the, sur the surface area of possibility around what you could, uh, what you could make. And so with videos is like, what, what could all the clips be with writing? It's like, what could all the different titles and subject lines be? And, and it can be very helpful as a part of that process, even if it's not making the production ready. Oh. Words. One writing AI task that I've seen Urtifa do and I thought was just like really, really cool is, so if you look at Urtifa's calendar, it's just like, you know, back to back to back to back sales calls, right? And so, um, but he needs to follow up on each sales call and say like, I'm hearing you, you're saying these things and here's how we are planning to support you. And so what he does is he takes the transcript from Grain and he puts it into Claude and he says, and he's like, write me the three bullets of like, what did I hear from them? And of course, then he goes in and edits, but it's a lot faster if he has to write like eight follow-up emails after a long day of meetings um, to get a starter like that. So I thought that was a great like AI to help assist in writing. Mm -hmm. So that so, was the list. Okay, wait, I want to discuss I, one more thing. Yeah. So there's one response to the tweet that's like, in 2024, these are all tools. Next year, all the AI quote tools that you use will all be agents. Like you won't be using... Um, you know, a writing tool, you'll be using an AI writer. You won't be using um, a, a coding autocomplete tool. You'll be using an AI coder, right? I yeah. actually think that this is how Jam will be used 10 years from now. Because if you like, if you think about an engineer that's managing all these like engineering agents that are going off and doing these sort of discrete tasks, you have to then review their work and like quickly share with them feedback so they can iterate because they won't get it right the first time. It's like a junior engineer. And so like people use Jam for that. I think people, I think engineers are going to send Jams to the agents to be like, fix this. This is broken. This is not right. You know, change this. Um, I'm really, really excited for when we have, um, you know, creator accounts, viewer accounts and agent accounts on our pricing page. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Ian. Thank you.